Configuring monitoring. Okay. Monitoring is very important because that scheduler needs to know that backend servers are still alive, services are alive, and servers are alive. No? Two different things. So if the server is dead or not alive, definitely there is a by default a monitoring for it, a normal TCP IP response. But server could be up, but HTTP service is down. So in this case, the NetScaler should know that it should not, it should isolate this web server from load balancing because web service has some problem or some error or let's say it's not running on that web server. So how to configure these type of monitorings? Let's see. I'm on my NetScaler, the primary one. And by the way, you just remind me one thing. As you know, in highly available configuration, what happens? Yeah, the secondary automatically takes changes uh, from primary, the changes will be propagated or saved to, you know, to the secondary. So if I go to a primary one, and let me show you here, traffic management and load balancing, what we have configured, right? And if I go to secondary and load balancing, is it the same stuff? Exactly the same. If I go, for example, just to show you, just on the IPs, including the subnet IPs or SNPs. So go to network and the secondary, same thing. So whatever it's there in primary. Whatever changes and configuration will sync to secondary, which is not active at the moment. Okay, so that reminds me one thing. Let me save my configuration. Oh, nothing's changed, already been saved. Fine. So, what should I need to do? Monitoring. Yes, so for monitoring, again, if we go to virtual server and I think if I'm at the right place, let me see. So sorry, I'll just go back here and go to services and let's see what type of monitoring is associated with that. One service to load balance monitoring binding. And here it is. Sorry about juggling. Okay. TCP default, as you can see, it's very simple. TCP sync and acknowledgement to sync. That's how it's monitoring my web server one. Sending the ping request, getting ping response. Okay, sync. Uh, I mean, let's take it this way, simple way. It's just probing it with the TCP Sync and when it's get the acknowledgement, okay, the server is up and running. But again, as I said, there could be a scenario where you, you may have 
server running, but service HTTP service is down. Right? So for that, we will like to add an, a binding of another type of monitor. And what type of monitors we do have got? You see, we have so many. We have HTTP, so let me add the HTTP as well. Success HTTP response code 200 received. It means that web server run is up with HTTP. Okay, same thing I would like to do for web server 2. Add a binding, select a monitor, and edge. Okay, bind, close, done, number three, binding, HTTP, okay, bind, And if I expand this one, server is up, up, and up, right? Server state is up. Okay, if I go more details into it, and binding it's getting HTTP response okay uh, go 200 HTTP response code 200 it's, uh, it's getting from the server it means yeah, it's all good HTTP service is still running so what switch server is it? it's web server 1 right? and same thing for web server 2 and web server 3 it is green. Let's just check it out. Back. You can see here that for Web Server 2 and back and sorry, let me just adjust this. Here it is. Okay. As you can see, it is now showing for web server. I refresh and it's showing it's down. HTTP is down for web server 3. Why? Because I just wanted to test. So, what I did, I went to web server 3 and stopped the HTTP service or worldwide web publishing service. That's why it is detecting it that it's down. So if I start this service, it will wait, it will take a little while because as you can see. If I will show you the definition of this pro, okay, there is it takes some time to get time out and then to try it again. And this time, when it tried, it find out that service is back. It's a good test, good test. Wow, that's cool. One more thing that you may ask that. 
Is it possible to add another type of binding as well? Oh, absolutely. Yes, you can. You can create a new type of monitor of type HTTP, uh, HTTP uh, content type. You will want to search for specific content or specific error code on a page. You can create those customized monitors. You will find several tutorials on that that shows you how to create HTTP ECB type monitors or HTTP CCB type monitors. Okay, so you see, you can create your own type of monitors and specify what you're looking for and what type of services. For example, HTTP CV and I can specify spatial parameters or parameters, they call it whatever you how you pronounce it depends. And HTTP you see lots of stuff here. For a storefront specific for Citrix web service, for example. So, for SMTP specific, radius specific, FTP, DNS. So, not all sorts of things are possible. So, UV, TCP, default. You can even customize, create new one, whatever you like. It's very, very, very flexible stuff here. Okay. Okay. So that was a demonstration in this demo i have created an http not created basically selected http monitor from the built-in monitors and configured for our web services or slash web servers so that it can detect if the http service is running or not of course you can create for, as I said, monitors for HTTP error codes, or you want Netscale to search for specific content on a page and display some message, or, or let's say, exclude the server. Lots of versatility is possible. Well, if the server is down, uh, of course, HTTP service will be down as well. But once you, the scenario is possible, the server is up, but HTTP service can be down or stopped. So that's what I did here. I just made, I just picked the default HTTP monitor and added it to our web servers just to show that Citrix Netscaler has lots of abilities and monitoring is one of them and it is fully customizable. All right. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.